Okay, so we have kind of our rough put together creature. There's lots of uh, edges. We had only started to really kind of zoom in and start to refine some of these outside edges and cut away from the outside, right? And we're gonna keep doing that, but we actually don't need all of this real estate anymore. Remember we had our guides and we made this around 11 by 14 inches at 350 pixels per inch. So now I can actually expand those guides a little bit as long as it's at least 11 by 14. I'm gonna push the guides around my creature a little bit more. It's always good to go a little bigger than smaller. And then I'm going to crop it using the crop tool down to those guides. And that way we'll have checked delete the cropped pixels and it will save a lot of memory. So going from 420 megabytes to now only 72 megabytes, right? Which should help with a lot of the processes we're gonna be doing. So if I zoom in, I can continue what, uh, what I was doing because I have all these separate layers and groups and erasing behind the things that I cut out nicely. So I, I did what I could to cut out that foot. If I have auto select layer, I can use the move tool and just select the layer and automatically go to it. And then I can continue to erase. I'm using a 100% opacity brush. At kind of a middling hardness level. And because I'm using less memory now for the overall space, it should go a little bit faster. And once I've cut that out, which I have, now I can erase the things behind it. So I just hold down command and I get back to my move tool and click on these layers that are behind it and can erase. And really I can even just kind of lasso this. And say, I know I don't need most of this. So just delete. And that's gonna reveal a little debris that we'll clean up later. Then I can take that same eraser and see if there's anything else. Ah, you see this. So I need, I want little bits of that, but not too many. And you can even with your brush, because we're using a pressure sensitive brush, this is zoomed in at 200%, so beyond what our print resolution is. But I can use that pressure sensitive brush at a bigger size and kind of make breaks in the edge, a little bit more like the fur with this slightly soft edge brush. And I can do it on this layer as well. Oh, too far. You see how I have my history, so I can always go back if I need to. The lighter you press, the thinner that transition will be. That soft edge, and it works well. And you just do the best you can with the tools you have. It's important that the brush is at 100% opacity. Now this green that's behind it, I'm gonna erase that. You keep what's helpful. And this blue that's here, I'm gonna leave that. Okay, moving back, I can hit option and, and just get all of these. Just little marks. So if I hit option and touch them, then I know I'll be on the, the correct layer. Yep. 
and the, the middle gray background helps you see some of this. We'll do another thing at the very end to make sure we've got all of the little debris taken care of. So first we clean up all the outside edges, then we can go to internal edges. And I'm using the move tool a lot and the shortcut for the move tool to get that, so I don't have to go over here and change tools all the time, is just holding down command on any other tool. I'm using the eraser and I'm using Move tool. And you can always do your little cutouts in spurts. Because each time you lift your stylus, it's going to save it as another step in your history. And we modify the, the default preferences so that your history should save at least 500 different steps instead of just 50. The default is only 50, and we finish 50 steps really quick. So you can go a little bit slower so you can always back up if you accidentally slip. And I have to redo a lot that you did well. This is something you get used to in digital painting, which we'll be doing later as well. It's also important just not to take yourself so seriously. And it's okay if it becomes like a three-toed animal, if that's what's required. And now because I've made that little channel cutting out the toes, I can just use my lasso and get these big chunks. And all I have to do is, instead of cutting it out perfectly with the lasso to begin with, I just have to work within that channel. Like an X-wing down the, the trench of the Death Star. It's a fit between them. And an easier path. Now I'm going to use my eraser so for something less concrete. Pull down Command to get to the, the Move tool to be able to select the right layers to erase, make a little Death Star trench. It's hard with all this fur at the bottom because I want some of that dark shadow underneath, but I also want it to look. I'm not making the shadow part of my creature. I just know I need some of that darkness at the bottom of 
the fur of the creature. So I make that little trench. Just define that edge all the way to the back. The more organic it is, the more forgiving it is. And I can take my lasso. It's like a nice little meditative game to fit it within your eraser space. Take little chunks at a time. Now I find that the tablet really helps with getting clearer selections. Some people like to use the vector tools if they're really used to Illustrator to create a path and then they right click and then change that path into a selection. That can be done as well if you need just like a, a really even curve. There's no wrong way to get your selection. But the quality of the selection in many ways dictates the quality of your work in Photoshop. All right, so I'm going to continue along the bottom. Might cut a little bit more of this out. I want to help that silhouette. Remember, we're going to put these creatures into our fantasy landscape. That's our next assignment, which we'll be introducing later today, and it's actually due next class. So that's a quick turnover assignment. But it's a great opportunity to really refine and work on the first two assignments if you have improvements you need to make before we combine them. Even if you have the selection, you can go back and use, uh, use the Move tool to select the layer. That's not the right one. Let's see. Oh, that's just makes sense. All right, it has to be turned on in order to delete from it. And now we're getting to the edge. Now the problem with using the lasso is look how sharp that is. I didn't feather it or anything, but I, I can treat that later. But I've made some strong decisions about where the, the final edge is of this creature. So now for the top edge, I can do the same sort of thing behind this flower petal. You can even get this little tuft of hair. And then I'm going to have to work on the internal edges of that flower. All those floral elements. Do that. And I see we have something here. I can just lasso out. No, let's see. Yeah, though I don't want to do too much. So the flower, I'm actually going to turn off here so that I can quickly just do a pass on this. See how the flower covers up a lot. But I want to be able to make those flowers somewhat more transparent if necessary. So in this case, because that's just a kind of a decorative finishing element, I'm actually going to just rough cut the whole back of this animal out. So if I decide to do something different with the flowers, 